Hey everybody, this is Josh McKinney, and I just want to welcome you to episode 101 of the I Suck at Jujutsu show. I was debating, should I go 101 on the episode or should I say 101? I'm really, I'm not married to either idea yet. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to run some experiments. We're gonna have to run some tests on that one. But it's great to see you guys. It's great that you guys have been listening to a podcast. Uh, episode 100 has done really, really well. And uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for that because I know that that came from the amount of shares that it got and uh, also just the amount of listens that it got. You know, that helps other listeners find the show by listening to the show. Uh, so before we jump into the reason you guys are listening today, I'm curious about this episode. I don't know if this episode is going to have less listeners than normal, like when I do a, a solo episode or more. A lot of times, pretty much every time on the show, when I'm doing a solo episode, we're just talking about some type of mindset of training uh, or a method of training or, or something, but it always has to do with training jujitsu. This time it does not. Uh, I wanted to start to do some episodes, especially the solo ones, on uh, different different parts, different things in jujitsu that I wish I knew about, uh, especially coming up. When I was a purple belt, had somebody have sat me down and told me what I'm gonna tell you guys, I would probably be in a completely different place uh, when it comes to where I make my money. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I run two jujitsu schools. That is where my full-time income comes from. I uh, do the, what we're gonna talk about, uh, learning to make money doing jujitsu without running a school. That is kind of what I do on this side. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that people understood though, you don't have to do it this way. Most people think the only way to make money doing jujitsu is to run their own school. And that's a discouraging thing because a lot of people don't want to run their own school. There are a lot of people who love where they train and wish that they had a way to make money off Brazilian jujitsu uh, and uh, still train where they train or they want to make money off brazilian jiu-jitsu and go train at one of the gyms that they've always wanted to train at one of the super gyms the autoses the head not hqs the dana heard that squad i'm just kidding i was just throwing head not hq that's my school if you guys wanted to come train here at my school it would be fun you would love it um but uh you would hate the city and the weather and everything else but the school itself is the best uh, so what we're going to do before we jump in, I just wanted to make sure to tell you guys, there are only three spots left on the Patreon page for monthly coaching. Okay. So what it is, is a 30 minute, uh, basically online private lesson with me where we don't discuss technique. We discuss how we can get you better at jujitsu, what things you could be focused on, what things you could be doing in your training, what goals you could be setting to progress in your training. Something else I will note is if you want to talk about what we are talking about, uh, when we're going to talk about uh, brand building and marketing and, and those type of things, uh, because your goal is to grow your jujitsu business or grow, create a jujitsu business uh, that makes money and allows you to be able to train, you can also sign up for the same exact thing. It would be the same exact price. Uh, and, uh, again, there are three spots left and you would be able to, we would be able to discuss what's going on, what goals we could set till the next time we meet, uh, and just some different thoughts and different things that we could do to get you better at making money doing jujitsu. So, uh, that's pretty much the only announcement that I have for you guys. Let's just jump right into the episode. We can, uh, uh just kind of go through, I'll just preface this. Uh, I've recorded this episode twice already, but I just didn't like how it turned out. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be interesting to listen to um, both times before it was very dry. And so we'll try to add a little more humor into this one just to make it more fun to listen to. Cause uh, for someone who isn't interesting, interested in these things, it might be boring to them. Um, but this will be an episode that you could listen to a few times and an episode that you could even take notes from because uh, there is a lot of good content in this. And uh, so 
let's just get started with the top. What is the goal? The goal is to make money, right? We want to make money uh, teaching jujitsu, uh, sharing jujitsu, or just doing jujitsu, right? A lot of people maybe have this idea that they're going to be a competitor. And that is where they're going to build everything off of. Okay, I'm just going to be a great competitor. I'm just going to beat everybody. Uh, you know what? There are a lot of great competitors that don't make any money doing jujitsu. They maybe have a small gi sponsor. They have something uh, and they don't, they don't make much money. Um, what we need to make sure of is that we know how much we are going to need to make to accomplish what we are trying to accomplish, because it may look different for other people or for everybody. Uh, for me, what my goals are with jujitsu, my goal isn't just to, to be able to make a, an income doing jujitsu and, uh, and just train as much as I want. That's just not my goal because I already have accomplished that at this point. My, my gym is, is pretty self-sustaining and it sustains, uh, myself. And so I don't have to, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have to, to put a lot of thought into what I do on the podcast and stuff for that sense of, well, if I could do this, then I could train jujitsu full time and, and just do whatever I want. Uh, I do that anyway. You know, it's, it's midday, uh, on, and it's on a weekday and uh, I'm not even, I don't even have pants on while I'm recording this podcast. And so, uh, you know, I kind of have that. Uh, for me, my goals are probably going to be different. They're going to be more uh, I, a certain dollar amount that I want. Maybe you feel that way too. Maybe you say, well, I want to use jujitsu to accomplish this, but I want to make a, a bunch of money. You will be able to do this. You'll be able to accomplish this. Maybe your goal is, I just want to make enough to survive. Uh, I just want to make enough to be able to continue to train and survive and not have to go to a job that I hate uh, 40 hours a week. Something else that we're going to talk about or note on this is it doesn't just have to be uh, your way of escaping a nine to five. It could be a supplemental income. It could just be a way that you get to go to part time at your job or part time at a different job and maybe work two or three days a week while uh, doing jujitsu or while being involved in jujitsu. So uh, we'll just start out with this. We want to talk branding. Okay. So whatever you decide is going to be how you make money doing jujitsu. And we're going to get there in a second. That is going to be your brand. Okay. That is very important for people to understand is even as a white belt, you are building a brand. Uh, maybe the brand that you're building is the guy with the stinky gi. Maybe the brand that you're building is, oh, this person's really good. This person could be something big, right? Uh, and that's your brand, right? You have a unique way of looking at jujitsu or, or maybe uh, your brand that you're building and we'll get into these things in just a second. Maybe it doesn't have anything uh, to do with jujitsu, but you apply it to jujitsu. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what we're going to mainly focus on is how to build a brand, what the reason is to build a brand. Uh, we don't think about it like this a lot, but every brand that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, every good brand, they have a message and they're trying to convey that message 100% of the time. Uh, if you ever watch a Coke commercial, uh, Coke, they say Coca-Cola is not selling Cokes, they're selling smiles. You will never see someone in a Coke commercial not smiling uh, with a Coke in their hand. And so that is what they are trying to convey. Like, oh yeah, you know, this thing that causes obesity and is going to kill you one day, uh, it's, it makes you smile. And so that's what they try to sell uh, for the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show, for instance. My brand is built on efficiency and effectiveness. That is what the brand is built on. I have like kind of a sub category, a sub, uh, I don't know, like a minor thing that a minor brand that I kind of always push. And that is that I am the only one doing this. That is like a, or doing this the way that I do it. There is there are no other imitators. There's no one else that does the things the way that I do. Now, the thing is, that wasn't just something I came up with. I didn't just come up with the idea of, okay, I want to build a podcast on efficiency and effectiveness. 
I wanted to build a podcast because I knew I wanted to grow an audience. I had no idea at the time what I wanted to do with that audience, but I knew I wanted to grow an audience. Uh, I knew I wanted to be more involved in the jujitsu community. And I looked and realized, hey, what, what's unique about my jujitsu? Well, for me, I started training and I got my purple belt under the same coach. I'm still under the same coach. As I got to a point though, uh, or got to a point at purple belt, pretty early at purple belt, my coach left the gym that he was teaching at to open his own school. It was a little bit further from my house and I had a lot of trouble making it with my work schedule. And a lot of people that uh, were from the town that I started uh training in Granite City, Illinois, they were dealing with the same problem. They were having trouble making it uh, across, actually had to cross state line, um, but across state lines to be able to train at my coach's gym on time. So what we did was we started training in my garage. We had mats in my garage and we started training and uh, there were like five or six of us and I was the highest ranking belt. I had been training probably the most amount of time and um, th then I had a few of the guys that have been on the show with me. It was not like I was by myself with this. Uh, my dad, Justin Huff, who's been on the show, uh, both guys were really, really instrumental in this, but we all had to learn how to get good at jujitsu on our own. This is something that most people never learn. Uh, I know that sounds nuts, but there are so many black belts that I train with that got their black belt. They had a good coach or they didn't, they had a bad coach, um, but they had a coach and that's where they learned their jujitsu from. Then they get their black belt and they start their own school and they never, ever get any better. And it has to do with, it's not that they're not motivated. Usually um, it's not that they're lazy. Usually it's just that they don't know how to get good on their own. They only know how to sit in a class, learn three new techniques, drill them a few times, and then see if maybe, you know, once every few months, they learn a technique that they can implement into their game. And uh, that is how most people know how to do jujitsu. We started looking at it differently. We started looking at, hey, there are different ways that we can train. There are different ways that we can drill. And they seem to be getting us better faster. There are different ways that we can think about jujitsu, and they seem to be getting us better faster. And so we started getting good at jujitsu faster. We started being really efficient and really effective with our time, which is something I would argue that nobody else is doing. You see how I connected both parts of my brand in that one statement? We were being more efficient. We were being more effective and no one else was doing it. That is what the brand of the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show is. If you listen to any of the solo episodes or any of the interviews where I'm talking, the message I am always trying to convey is efficiency and effectiveness. And we're going to give you something unique, something that no one else is trying, something that no one else knows about. That is what the brand is built on. Okay. So if you are going to build your own jujitsu brand, and I'll give you just a few examples, like off the top of my head, of things that could be a jujitsu brand. I'll give you guys some that are uh, national, that aren't local, and then some that are local. Okay. So obviously, anything national would be through media, social media, or something like that, right? You could start a podcast, you could start a YouTube channel. But for those two, you think, well, I'm not good enough to start a podcast or a jujitsu YouTube channel. No one wants to learn what I have to teach. Well, you don't have to teach. You can start a podcast and just have good black belts on. You can interview them. You can ask them questions about how they got their black belt and how they got better. Or you could be one of the podcasts that uh, asks people more of like their day-to-day -day life and, and digs in on that. You could also... Um, you could start a YouTube channel where you find other black belts or black belts, maybe your brand new white belt, and you ask them, hey, could you show a move for my YouTube channel? I'm trying to build it. It's uh, If that is your brand, I would say, suggest don't like build your brand off your name. If you don't feel confident in your jujitsu, I would just build your brand off of, uh, like for me, I built the I Suck a Jiu-Jitsu show, right? I didn't make it the Josh McKinney show. Um, I didn't want my podcast to be based on me. Uh, cause I don't know, you can't tweak, you can't tweak that near as well as you can tweak the, the branding and the direction of a podcast that you invented. But, uh, you could ask black belts to show moves on your YouTube channel. You could also just 
find clips from all the different YouTube channels, all the different uh, uh, grappling media that there is and share them. There are Instagram pages. That's all they do is they post match footage. Um, They post like I get tagged. I get tagged a lot in these random videos where it's like, look at Josh McKinney's ankle lock. And it's an ankle lock I forgot that I did. It's just at a tournament that they somehow found on Flow or YouTube or something. And then they took that clip of it and they posted on their Instagram. And I share it because I'm like, oh, that's a video of me. And then they get exposure to all of the people that follow me on Instagram and they stay relevant like that, right? And so understanding that you're building a brand and you're trying to build an audience with that brand. Uh, Maybe you're not wanting to be online. Maybe you are just, for whatever reason, you just don't want to do it. Uh, It's not something that interests you. Maybe you want to focus on local jujitsu. You could easily, this is like, I think one of the most underdone things Uh, You could build a brand on women's self-defense. And I think that that, I really think that that could be one of the most underdone things in jujitsu. Guys, jujitsu is the most effective self-defense martial art that there is. Would you rather, if you're married, would you rather your wife or your significant other or your daughter, would you rather them learn Krav Maga from some bum that can't, let's not get into that, but uh, would you rather them learn a a, a less effective martial art where they're going to say, oh yeah, 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 just walk up and hit them with the speed bag to the groin like uh, Lloyd Christmas does in Dumb and Dumber. Like, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to work. We have the most effective self-defense martial art. We should be building more brands off of defending yourself uh, as a woman. And and so you could easily build a brand locally on that. And uh, we'll talk about what you would be posting and what that would look like in just a second. Um, Something else you could do is you can do private lessons. And you don't have to be the best guy in your area to do private lessons. Um, For example, my dad was, when we were purple belts, he was, I guess he would probably been 55, 56. I guarantee you there were like no 55 and 56 year old purple belts. He could have easily marketed only to 50 plus purple belts in our area or 50 plus jujitsu practitioners in our area and tried to get five of them to do a private. If you did, um, let, let's think of it like this. If you just did five privates a month, um, you have five different people and they're consistent. Most likely, depending on what you charge, most likely you're making an extra like $500 of income each month. That is not for five hours of work, five hours of your time. That is not a lot. Maybe you don't have access to that and you have to invest a little in like uh, matting your garage or your basement or something like that to be able to do the privates. Uh, Maybe your your, uh, gym is not as cool with other people doing private lessons. Uh, That might happen. But Regardless, the idea is you can build a brand and an audience, and we'll get into how to build the audience in just a second, but you can build a brand just by asking yourself one of two questions. The first question is, what BJJ skill makes me unique? Is there anything you do that is unique that you can build a brand off of. And this isn't something that you're going to just always find off the top of your head. Is there some struggle that you had to overcome that you feel like most other people don't? Are you old? Are you inflexible? Are you small? Is there a struggle that you had to overcome? Um, For me, it was that we didn't have a coach. We had to learn on our own. That was a struggle that I had to overcome that became my online brand. Then the other question, Is there a non-BJJ skill that you have that makes you unique? Are you a videographer? Could you go and try to find different people that want to learn or want to teach online, but they have no video equipment, no knowledge of how to do it? Could you go in and say, okay, well, I'll film you for dot, dot, dot. Uh, Or are you a marketer? You know how to market. Is that what you do at your job? There are a ton of jujitsu businesses that you could target that suck at marketing. They don't even realize their need for marketing. Uh, there are, man, there are so many different things that you could tie in 
to your jujitsu brand if you just have something unique about you? What makes you different? Uh, that is, and again, we're talking about non bjj skills that make you different. Then once you've built that brand, once you at least have an idea and keep in mind, it is going to be kind of fluid. It is going to be malleable. You are going to start with the idea of, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And maybe you do five episodes of a show where you are focused on, I don't know how cooking and jujitsu relate. And then you're like, man, you know what? I'm not finding a lot of people. I'm not finding a lot of enjoyment out of this. Maybe I should shift my focus to how, I don't know, eating and jujitsu relate, right? The, the eating part of the episode is what I enjoy doing. Um, you know, maybe the, the, man, there are just so many different things. Are you a trainer? Um, that is something that like, that's one of the most common things in jujitsu is you have a lot of people that are personal trainers that do jujitsu. It's what I did before I had my school. And actually during uh, my school and I wasn't making any money, that is what I did was I learned how to, um, I, I, or I, you know, I was a personal trainer. That was what my job was. I could have tried to make a shift towards being a personal trainer specifically for jujitsu. Uh, you know, and you can make yourself an expert in those situations by study, by learning, about things. So um, that is kind of our big thought. But then the question, once we built our brand is how can we monetize this? So that's something that maybe not everybody realizes is that we don't, we, we should go in with the goal of audience and the goal of how we're going to get people to listen to our message before we worry about what product we're selling. Everyone thinks of entrepreneurship the opposite way. They think of entrepreneurship like, okay, um, me and my buddy are in my garage and we're going to invent a new light switch that you can only turn on and off with a fart. And then they're like, that's a great idea. This is going to make millions of dollars. And so then they have this product that they invented and they have no idea how to monetize. They have no idea how to supply or what supply chain is. They have no idea how they're going to get product. They have no idea how they're going to ship product, how they're going to tell people about it, how they're going to market it. But they have the product and they think that is what matters. And generally speaking, uh, the product comes last. Usually the brand and the marketing is what you should be focused on when you are starting out. And it's the same for being what you would be called most likely as a personal brand. Um, that is going to be uh, that is going to be what you should focus on first. But then, how do I monetize this? How do I monetize a podcast? Well, I just started my Patreon at episode one hundred, right? Um, that is a way of monetizing a podcast. I can run ads. You can monetize a podcast by running ads. I could. What else could I do? Um, on YouTube, you can run ads. If you have a YouTube channel, you don't have to on Facebook too. Uh, I would advise, I probably would advise going with YouTube if you're trying to do something that is video based uh, over Facebook. And the only reason is Facebook is going to take even longer for you to see money. Um, YouTube, basically how it works is you need a thousand subscribers and then a certain amount of watch time in order to monetize, meaning them pay you money for people watching ads that they, um, that they put at the beginning or the middle or whatever of your video. Uh, so that is, I think with Facebook, it's like 10,000, uh, you need 10,000 subscribers to be able to do that. So, um, I don't know, that was a random note. How are you going to monetize? How are you going to make money? Are you going to start a podcast? Maybe you don't want to run ads on your podcast or you don't want a Patreon page. Maybe you want to have a separate website where you sell online coaching or you sell different products. Uh, There are so many ways to monetize, but the biggest thing, the most important thing is figure out how to do it. Figure out how to make a dollar is how I always think about it. So if I'm going to monetize and try to be the uh, a local guy that does a lot of private lessons, then one, I'm going to have to start to market myself as that. Uh, and it's mar- I'm going to have to start to market the uniqueness that I have in the product that I'm selling. Uh, and 
I need to make some money off of it. I need to get some people, one person even that I'm doing once a month is going to be huge. Uh, just the ability to make a little bit of money on a business. It mentally is helpful. Uh, it's just like when we get a submission in jujitsu, it's like, okay, I didn't just submit a black belt world champion. That's, that's okay. But I did, I did just show myself that I am grasping what I'm trying to do and that maybe I'm getting a little better at it. And so, uh, it, with this branding, don't expect to be good at it at first, expect to struggle. This is a, uh, this is a skill that has to be developed. This isn't like just jump in and you're going to be good at it. Expect to not make money off of it for the first year or two. Um, you know, I told you guys on episode 100 that I had never, uh, that I basically I went into my podcast saying I'm going to do 100 episodes before I ever try to make money. Why? Because I really wanted to make sure my brand was good. I really wanted to make sure my brand was uh, that I had focus. There's going to be little tweaks that I make uh, on what the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show is. But at this point, most likely they're going to be very little because I've started to build a brand. I've started to build a an online persona doing this, talking to you guys about things in Jiu-Jitsu that no one else is talking to you about. And so uh, now let's talk a little bit about marketing. Uh, marketing is one of the most interesting things that people don't know about, uh, in my opinion. One of my favorite things that people have no idea about. And so with marketing, all it is, is how I'm going to convey my message to other people. That is what marketing is. I have a message now. I have a brand. I want to be the woman self-defense guy. I want to be the guy that, you know, just the day in the life of jujitsu guy. Uh, I want to be the guy that interviews different people, or I want to be the, I don't know. There's just a lot of things we could be, right? Uh, but how do I convey that to other people? How do I tell that to other people? One of the easiest ways to do it is to post on social media consistently. What you are trying to post is your brand. You are just trying to explain what your brand is. There are a ton of different things, uh, even like probably free things, most likely because uh, the government is listening in and spying on everything that we do here and say, most likely what's going to happen is you will probably get some ads for some online Instagram brand building webinars. Uh, I recommend doing those things. I, I don't usually recommend, it depends on the person on if you're going to buy their product or not. Cause at the end of every web, free webinar, they're going to try to get you to buy uh, those. I kind of, I don't know. I kind of am iffy on some of the, a lot of those, a lot of times they oversell, uh, but what they are good at is giving you some focus. They'll always give you some goals, some things to follow, some things to be thinking about when you're posting on social media. Uh, but for me, I think marketing, the, the best way to learn marketing is to learn about free marketing. Uh, so learn about how to market without spending any of your money. Something else you can do. If you are somebody who has a little more jujitsu knowledge, you can try to get in on other people's podcasts, get in on other people's YouTube videos. And you don't say, hey, would you like to have me on? You come in and you say, hey, I have this thing that I want to talk about, this women's self-defense that I want to talk about that nobody else is talking about. And I think uh, it would be a make for a really cool episode on your podcast or whatever, right? And so you, you make it beneficial for them. And that brings me to the next thought, which is networking. This is, I think, the number one thing that I wish I knew about at jujitsu tournaments. I've been to a lot of jujitsu tournaments, probably hundreds of jujitsu tournaments. And if I knew then what I know now about marketing and about how important it is to just know people that do jujitsu, uh, I really think that that could have been one of the biggest shifts for me, the biggest things I didn't know. Uh, if you ever see me at a jujitsu tournament and you come up to me, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to ask you your name. I'm going to ask you what you do. I'm going to ask you where you train at. Why? Because I like to know these things because it helps me network. Um, a lot of times I'll meet people and we'll start talking about stuff and I'll go, oh man, this guy, 
he has some interesting thoughts on dot, dot, dot. Maybe I want to have him on my podcast later. I'll just get his info, even with no, in, in, no goal of, you know, I'm going to, hey, will you be on my podcast? Say, hey, uh, add me on Facebook, add me on whatever, uh, you know, I'll follow you on Instagram. Just building a network like that. When you are, if you're somebody who's like a competitor is trying to get sponsored, you should be known by everybody that has a stand at any tournament you go to. Anybody that has some type of gear stand, go up, buy something cheap, have a conversation with the owner. Usually, you know, no, nobody's making great money. And usually somebody who is the owner or um, the general manager, the chief operating, whatever, is going to be the person selling you t-shirts. Go talk to them. Go have a conversation with them. Go uh, see if you can add them on Facebook. See if you can get their email. See if you can get some type of contact with that person. Uh, because the more consistent you stay with those things, that is what brands want to see. Um, everybody thinks like, man, if I just win these big tournaments, these gee companies are going to give me money. And it just does not work like that. You have to say, hey, I have a huge following because maybe I've won these tournaments but also because I'm posting good content. I have a big following. That's where the sponsorships go to. I bet you at like adult black belt worlds, I bet you only like the top 20% of those athletes, which are probably the top 1% of jujitsu athletes that there are, the top 20% of them are actually have like financial sponsorships with their gi company that they're sponsored by. So few people actually get gi sponsorships. I look at it like this. If I were to send out a message to just a bunch of different gi sponsors, and I have way, way, way more um, reach than most black belts, most of them, they would be like, oh yeah, we'll send you some t-shirts. Like, dude, I'm trying to get money here, right? I'm trying to, I can't feed my family with t-shirts. And so it's really important to understand that like, the sponsorships in jujitsu are still not great. I would recommend that not being your prime focus for how you're going to make money. Um, I really think building your brand is going to be the most important thing. Having people that want to hear what you have to say on whatever topic it is. Uh, and so kind of at this point, I thought, you know, we talked a lot of branding, talked a lot of marketing, um, and I just kind of bounced from one thought to the next. Uh, I'll give you guys three tips on um, on how to go about this, on how to actually have a chance of either quitting the job that you do or uh, doing less of the job that you do and making money with jujitsu. I don't want to just say doing because if you're making money uh, just writing for um, jujitsu marketing companies. You could easily do that. And that's not doing jujitsu, right? But a lot of us just want to be involved. Um, actually, fourth tip, I'll give you this one first because I just thought about it. Um, something people may not realize is if you're trying to be involved in jujitsu, is a lot of the like nomad jujitsu people that you meet and you see on social media, they work for gi companies and they'll do like customer support for gi company. And so all you would have to do is you could work anywhere and you would have to answer phone calls throughout the day. You would just be on call uh, during certain periods of time. But there are, there are other ways that aren't building your own brand that you could make money involved in jujitsu. You could always be an employee for jujitsu companies. And I would like, if, that is your, if that's something that interests you, um, because of the remoteness of the work, you could go train anywhere. Um, you could easily just start messaging jujitsu companies and say, Hey, I have skill. This is my resume. If you guys are looking to hire somebody, even at part time, even at five hours a week, I would love to do it. And you can get your foot in the door doing that. Um, but that was just a, a tip that I didn't write down. But three tips to actually making money on jujitsu and uh, really with the intention of making jujitsu your primary income. And the first one, and the most important one is to stop spending so much freaking money. So many people could quit the job that they hate by not spending so much. Usually, though, we get tied down by what we buy. Oh, you make more money. 
You have to move to a bigger house. You make more money. You should buy a new car. You make more money. You should do this or that. Uh, and, and sometimes it's even like, uh, it's even disguised as, is like, oh yeah, you'd be saving money on taxes if you bought a bigger house. Yes, but I would also be spending thousands more per month. And that's thousands of more per month I would need to make from jujitsu in order to survive and are able to, in, in order to enjoy uh, my life the way I want to. So just checking your expenses would make a huge difference for so many people. You guys have heard me rant about it on the podcast before. I'm of the opinion that there is an impending economic collapse. Uh, there's just too many things that you can look around at. You, you're starting, depending on the area you're in, you're starting to see more places for lease. You're seeing a lot of people in debt and a lot of people in huge amounts of debt. And uh, this, our supply chain in America is messed up. Just a lot of things that aren't going our way. And generally, how the market corrects these things, the free market corrects these things, is by crashing. Uh, that is generally what happens. It's just a lot of, I don't know, just in my opinion, there are a lot of things. Most, maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong. There is no impending economic collapse, but uh, man, if there is, and I am right in the next few years, this happens, being able to make money online would be really, really nice. And not spending so much, not being in so much debt, and maybe even having some money saved up could be the difference between, uh, could be the difference between like being successful out of this or uh, struggling a lot. Uh, and, and the reason I'm just to, to note for this, the reason that this is something that's important to me, something I think about a lot is um, when we were, when I was a kid uh, in 2008 and the, I guess I wouldn't have been a kid kid. I would have been like 14. Um, but when I was 14 in 2008, my dad's gym business had, um, we, he had like three, four locations. And so I uh, had a bunch of trainers and then the crash happened and it was the, the, um, the housing crash happened and it was really, really rough. And so just with running a business, just going in and saying, Hey, I don't have to spend everything I make. Um, that's not how I have to live. I need to just be conscious of what I actually need to be happy. Uh, I think that that is really important. If there's, if you guys want more on that, so there's a blog. I'm not, I don't really want to listen to the blog or uh, read the blog, but I've read a lot or listened to a lot of the podcasts. But Mr. Money Mustache is really interesting on just figuring out how much you actually need to survive, how much you actually need to enjoy life. Uh, and it's, I don't know, just really interesting. And I thought that I would put that in as like the top tip on doing jujitsu for a living is not spending so much money. I really, I think I might've learned this from John Thomas. Um, I remember when he lived in Atlanta and he was uh, teaching and training, he wasn't making much, but he also wasn't spending much. And so you didn't, he wasn't worried about, it. he wasn't worried about how much money he needed to make to survive because he kept low expenses. Um, and it allowed him to be able to train jujitsu full-time. Next. We'll talk about consistency, just like with anything else. Consistency is one of the most relevant things uh, to getting good at it, right? For jujitsu, what did almost everybody, what did like probably 70% of the people say when it came to uh, the last question on the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show? How do you suck less? Just keep training. Stay on the mat. Get as much mat time as you can. Stay consistent. Brand building, marketing, these are skills. The more you do them, the better that you will get. So that is going to be one of the primary things for you is staying consistent. Some tips on staying consistent is first, you have to enjoy. We love negative reinforcement. And I think that there is a huge place for negative reinforcement in a lot of things. For most of us, especially people that do jujitsu, we'd like to just torture ourselves. We like to make things hard on ourselves. It's just common. Try to not do that. Try to 
enjoy yourself. Something that really has been helpful for me. Um, this is, I got from Chewy who does really great business coaching. If you guys, um, or brand coaching too. Uh, if you guys wanted somebody, uh, that was a recommendation that wasn't my Patreon for your brand building. Um, I would definitely recommend Chewy. Uh, but, uh, something that he said, man, when would this have been? Um, that he said that he talked about that really was helpful for me is um, he talks about setting limits on how much time you put into, I think he was talking about online business and like writing and stuff, but uh, that is huge is putting limits on it. Like he says, he does, uh, he sets his timer for 33 minutes and he does it in chunks and he kind of takes a break in between. Um, It is a marathon. It is not a race. Make sure that you are doing things that reward you that, that you enjoy yourself with, um, for as of right now, I just, I have three subscribers on my Patreon page. Um, we just started it. I, I it would have just been a few days ago that it went live, um, from recording this, but I have three. And so Danny Keaton and Justin, thank you guys for subscribing to the Patreon page. I love you guys. You're the best. Uh, but with that money that I'm going to make from that, even though it's very little amount of money, I have a plan for it and it's fun. It's something that uh, for the podcast that I want. And so having a, uh, having little rewards that you can give yourself, you teach your first private lesson and you make a hundred dollars off it. And maybe it is a hundred dollars that you would rather reinvest back into like paid advertising or something like that. And that is totally okay, but make sure it's something you would want to do, or you could celebrate that first one and say, okay, I, I did it. I made, I made a hundred dollars doing it. I'm going to take my significant other out to dinner and we're going to have a date night, but do something, reward yourself um, for those milestones, reward yourself for those goals. Um, and that is going to be the big thing is setting goals to keep yourself consistent, even small goals. Um, for me, I don't think I've ever set a goal for the podcast on like how many listeners that I was going to get from me, I've been focused for hundred episodes on building the brand. So my goals have been more, I want to get to this episode. I want to get to episode 100, um, and see what my, uh, what my message is at that point. Is there any, is there any tweaks to what I've been trying to preach to people? Um, are there any things I want to, I want to change? And these are things that I enjoy. So what happens is, uh, I get a lot of, fulfillment out of it. That's something I enjoy doing. And so it keeps me motivated. And the last thing, and this is the most important, if you're going to do any type of entrepreneurial uh, undertaking, it is to, and this is cheesy, but it's to believe in yourself. It is the hardest thing in the world to just believe that you can do something. Uh, That is what keeps most of us from doing things is that we just don't believe that we can. There's no way Josh can make money doing jujitsu because um, he's really good. That's just not true. That is, there are a lot of people, there are people that are better than me at jujitsu that make no money doing jujitsu. There are people that are substantially worse than me, uh, 50 times worse than me, that make substantially more than I do doing jujitsu. So it is not your skill level in jujitsu that is going to be what dictates you on if you're going to be, if you're going to make money, Uh, it is going to be your consistency. It is going to be the coaching, how coachable you are. Uh, And it is going to believe, it's going to be that you believe that you believe that you are going to do it. And whether no matter what roadblocks you meet, you will figure out, you will problem solve, you will create a way to jump those hurdles, to, to break through those walls. Uh, and just another little note on this, you are going to have people that discourage you from these things. One of the easiest ways to deal with that is just to not tell people stuff. Don't tell people stuff that isn't their business. Um, obviously if it's your wife or your husband, you should, you should, talk to them about that. You should have, you should communicate what your intentions are, what you're trying to do. Uh, but I cannot tell you how many people, when I was like 17 or 18, 
would give me advice about how I shouldn't. So I didn't go to college. I had no desire to do it. I knew I wanted to teach jujitsu for a living. And so I said, no, I'm going to work as a personal trainer until I have money to open a school for jujitsu. And I went in and I did that. So many people told me you should really go to school and get a business degree. And generally I would ask them because, well, you guys know how I am. Uh, really, do you have a business degree? No. Then how do you know I should get one? Do I need a business degree to open a business? No. Then why should I get one? Or I would always get business degree and then a minor in like exercise science because people knew I wanted to be a personal trainer. And I would be like, dude, I don't, I'm not trying to be an exercise scientist. I don't need that degree. I don't want to start 40, 80, $120,000 in debt to do the same thing that I was going to do. And uh, the reason that I didn't take those people's advice is because they didn't own jujitsu schools. Make sure you're taking advice from people that have done the thing that you are trying to do. There are a million discouragers in everybody's life. Everybody wants to tell you, no, 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 that's, that's too risky. You shouldn't do that. Um, Levi Jones Leary had a funny clip from an interview where he's talking about how he wanted to chase jujitsu and he wanted to, to figure out, <coughs> sorry, I had to pause that, had a coughing fit, nearly died. Um, but Levi Jones Leary is uh, in an interview and he's talking about how he wanted to pursue jujitsu. And he goes, everybody kept telling me, you can't put your eggs in one basket. He goes, but you can. All you have to do is put your eggs in that basket. And all he's saying is, all you have to do is commit. All you have to do is jump in. All you have to do is do it. And that will be the biggest thing. That is going to be whether or not you're successful. Do you believe? Are you going to stay consistent? And are you going to stop spending so much money? And so I figured I would finish this episode with a little challenge for you guys. I don't know. I thought it'd be fun. So if anyone decides to not act locally, if anyone listens to this podcast and they go, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to do local private lessons or I don't want to do local, whatever. I want to do something online and you guys create a YouTube channel or you create a podcast, something that has episodes and you need guests on it. I thought it would be fun. I would offer anyone who could complete this task uh, a free interview with Josh McKinney on whatever you are on, on your podcast or YouTube show, whatever. And so if you post seven videos, uh, seven interviews, seven episodes of anything, and you want me to, after that, you want me to be on your show, I will for free, no questions asked, be on your show. Um, if you stole the idea of doing a YouTube channel where different black belts teach techniques, I will send you a video that you can share on your YouTube channel. I just thought it would be fun uh, and maybe a little motivating for some people who have that intention of starting a podcast. And it would just give you a good first goal. So if you want to do that, you can always message me. If you, if you complete this task, you can message me uh, Josh at simplifyingjujitsu.com on my email, or you can just message me on Instagram at the Josh McKinney. I think that's probably the easiest way to contact me. And uh, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope, I really hope that some people take this knowledge, take these ideas and they, they commit, they try to chase their dream. It is hard to chase your dream. It's hard to to just commit. It's hard to say, I am going to be successful in this. I, I, I can do this. Uh, even though, you know, I'm a nobody from Granite City, Illinois. It's hard to say that you're going to make that dream a reality. But I promise, if you focus, if you look at these things as skills and you focus on sharpening them, you will get better at it. You will have success. Not everybody will be a millionaire off of it, but you will be able to provide for yourself and, and be able to train and be able to enjoy your life in maybe a different and unique way uh, and, and kind of accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. 
Um, that's pretty much all I got. I hope today's episode was informative for you. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, be sure to send this one to somebody. If you know somebody who wants to make jujitsu their living, uh, I tried to keep this episode right at an hour. I didn't set a timer, so I'm not sure if it actually is, but, uh, uh, an hour is not a ton of commitment that, uh, you have to put in to be able to have some, to be able to, to have some ideas some some simple goals on how you're going to accomplish doing jujitsu full time without running a school. If you guys want me to do an episode on running a school, I would be happy to do that. Um, but I just need people to tell me that that is what they want to do uh, or, or that, that they would want to hear that. Um, I know I do have school owners that listen to the show. And so I would be really happy to do that. I have some really unique ways of looking at bringing in new students and uh, you know, kind of the important things of running a school. Uh, so I've had people that have come to me. I'll, I'll use an example example specifically. You know, one of my friends started a school in like December of 18 and uh, we put in my systems for my gym and pretty much all the same stuff, same math, same everything that we use for my gym. And I think they went from like zero to 88 students within uh, 12 months, within a year. And you think about that in terms of December of 2018 means that 12, nine of the 12 months that they were open were COVID months. And so, um, you know, probably two of those months they were closed. And so uh, it's, it is a really good formula for running a successful school. So if you guys have any interest in that, be sure to let me know. And uh, maybe I'll do an episode on that. And that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Hope you guys suck just a little bit less at jujitsu. What's up guys, Josh here again. I just wanted to tell you, give you a little more information on some of the other content that I produce that isn't just the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show. If you are wanting more information on how to become more efficient and effective in your Jiu-Jitsu training, the number one thing that I always recommend to people is my Patreon page, the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show Patreon page because we release a five to 15 minute exclusive episode every single Saturday. This is called Suck Less Saturday, and it is completely focused on being for your jujitsu training, for your jujitsu mindset, and for your jujitsu progression. And so what we'll do is a quick but deep dive on a different thought, idea, or training method every single Saturday. And you can only get this on our Patreon page. I also have a few spots open, depending on what time you're listening to this podcast, for my Suck Less Coaching. What that is, is a monthly cost to get a monthly meeting with me where we meet over Zoom and set some goals based on what you are trying to accomplish in Jiu-Jitsu and set some different training methods uh, to help you get there. Uh, there's nothing like this online right now. There is no Jiu-Jitsu coaching that teaches you how you should be training. Uh, and. It is exclusively on the ISAC Jiu-Jitsu Patreon page. Also, if you guys want to just be in more contact or you want to learn a little more about my ideas in Jiu-Jitsu, I highly recommend that you subscribe that you sign up for Simplifying Jiu-Jitsu. It is a free ebook. It is at simplifyingjujitsu.com. And what we do is we break down the top five positions, the essential five positions of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. These are the five positions where most Jiu-Jitsu, 90 plus percent of Jiu-Jitsu takes place in. And we break down how to train them, how long you should be training them, and what order uh, you can train these things to progress fast and easier with your jujitsu. And lastly, if you guys would just give this show a subscribe and a share, it would be very greatly appreciated. Also, you can review us on certain uh, podcast platforms. If you guys want to keep up with me personally, you can follow me at my Instagram at the Josh McKinney. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for listening. I hope that you guys listen to the next one.